Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. You're probably wondering what the hell I am doing with this Dyson portable vacuum. Well, anybody that works with rabbit strip would know what I'm doing with that Dyson. The big thing with the uh, rabbit strip, it seems to get everywhere. I had a coffee, and I don't know if you could see into this or not, but I just got water. And just sitting here for two minutes, I got rabbit hair all up in my cup. I'm gonna have to clean that thing out real well. I got myself a brand new flat brim today. Looking sharp, looking like a million bucks. Anyhow, it's been uh, it's been a very festive season for here for uh, the the team at uh, Permanent Fish Finder and Friday Night Flies. We didn't do too much tying over the the winter celebratory season because, as you all know, we all have families and we all have real jobs and it's a hectic time of year. I had a lot of family over, and uh, hey, if I can't go, nobody goes. So. I'm working on a pattern because as you guys know and gals know that it's almost steelhead season here in the Pacific Northwest. The guys that have been up north have been fishing them quite a bit and our season is just around the corner and we're pretty excited about it. Um, hopefully we don't have any audio issues. Has anybody checked that? And is anybody checking? We're not having any audio issues? Hey, that's got to be a first. That has got to be a first that we haven't had any audio issues. But anyhow, I've been working on a pattern last week. This week I've kind of just implemented some real fishy color. Let's go down to camera four. Does it look okay with the colors that I got behind me? Because I know Johnny had a black yeah, shirt and I couldn't good. see it. But anyhow, you can't tell me that that thing is not going to be gobbled up by either Chinook or Steelhead. I know for a fact that this thing is going to get gobbled. So what I've done is used a lot of rabbit strip and I got lots of it laying around right here because my good friend John Horner brought in a like uh, well I'll just give you an idea. He brings in, let's go back up to camera three for two seconds. Camera three. Can we back up to camera three? These are bags full of rabbit strip. <laughs> he showed up and he gave me goosebumps because man honestly I've I don't think I've ever seen bags of rabbit strip like this before in my life. So needless to say, he's going to be leaving with a, a whole lot less than he came with. And uh, I'm going to get busy tying a few different colors. So right here, I've got the combination. We're going to have back number four. We're bouncing all over the place, but for a good reason. What we've done is impl implicated uh, some silly legs in chartreuse and these ones. And they come in these big strands. You can probably see them in the back there. And uh, whenever you're going with Chinook or Steelhead, they kind of like being broke up into a couple different colors. Um, it just gives them something to focus on, and it's and it's highlights, you know. So I put a little bit of chartreuse in with black. So if you're working murky waters, the darker colors seem to work better. And when you're fishing clearer water, the, the brighter colors seem to be working better. So I, I give them a couple tones. So... The pattern I'm going to work on from this one here is because I, I haven't fished these that much yet and I, I really have to do my homework. And while I'm tying for you fine ladies and gentlemen out there, I'm going to do my homework. So this next one that I'm going to be tying today is going to use black in the body. I'm going to use some different colored silly legs, two tones, so blue and pink, which are also very fishy. And then I'm going to put a pink head on it. And I'll show you how easy this is to do. So with this one here, for the head for a dubbing loop, I tied in ice dub and chartreuse. I really like how ice dub looks. It's got a lot of color, and when you uh, Velcro it out, it really flows together too. So I mean, the more you flick it out with the, the Velcro, it makes the fly look a lot more streamlined. And like I said in the description, the best way I've found catching steelhead and chinook is either swinging flies, you can poke them down in the bottom end of a big hole in a trough, in the tail oats or in the head of the holes, but then also you'll do well by just dead drifting these big fleshy patterns. Um, try both, man. I mean, that's the thing. If you're not getting them one way, 
swap it over, try it a different way. And then you're going to find out what works. And when you do find out what works, make sure you call your good friends over at the Pemberton Fish Finder or at uh, Friday Night Flies and give us the GPS coordinates to all your great fishing holes. And uh, we promise we won't tell anybody, okay? So anyhow, let's get to tying this beautiful fly today. I've only tied a few of these, but they're, they're actually quite simple to tie. What we're doing, what we're tying these guys on is a Mustad SL73UBLN-36890. I don't know where they get these product codes, <laughs> but what it is is a 2 watt salmon single. And that's the, the hook itself right there. So if, And you can see I've got a steady hand like a surgeon. So let's get to tying this fly. You know what? All you guys that are following us right now, I'd like to see some of these steelhead pictures you guys are talking about out there. For the tail, what I'm doing is measuring the length of the shank and then cutting it off. Nothing special. Putting a little bit of a taper at the front so you take the front, give it a little bit of a taper. You'll see why here in a second. Taking the hook. Hook, and what I'm going to do is just where the taper comes back to the meat, I'm just going to push the hook down through it. it makes it easier, like i got a wood table here that I'm tying on. And then just pull it up. So you're going to tie this fly so it's inverted. So it's coming down along the bottom like this. So when you put these big dumbbell eyes that I've got here, they're, they're like all I got to pick them up, they're that heavy. It's going to ride upside down and clank on these dumbbell eyes so that you're not hooking bottom. You want it down on the bottom. At that point, we're going to light, lay this guy in the vise. Square it up as much as you can. Hopefully everything's still focused for y'all. 3 aught pink uni thread. We're going to get a little bit of a base down. How's everything looking there, cameraman? Looking good? Oh, yeah. You're not going to worry too much about what it looks like underneath here. But uh, the biggest thing is you just want to put a little bit down, something for it to kind of bind to. Cut off your little tag ends here. So you can see how you got a taper on this hook. You don't want to go too onto that taper or your tail is going to look really messed up. So you want to leave it kind of up on top, get underneath that little nub, and you're going to lock this guy into place while keeping this rabbit strip in the back straight up and down. It doesn't matter if you spin a little bit of that hair because you're going to see here real quick that you're going to spin a lot of hair on this shaft, shaft of this hook. Yeah, I did say shaft. Oh, yeah. Guys and girls back there. Look. <laughs> he said shaft. So now we got these two-tone rubber legs, or silly legs. I'm just going to break these apart. And you're pretty well going to split it right down the middle. There's no such thing as a perfect fly. You're going to put three down one side down one side and just hold it there with your thumb bingo bango then you're going to take it over to the other side tie it in same thing down that side I'm making this look really easy but the reality is is that this is a very easy tie should be able to pound these out pretty quick okay Hopefully you guys didn't see me. I have my tongue stuck out there again. When I'm concentrating, that's what happens. Okay, so now we'll go back to the rabbit strip. In a rabbit strip, you'll see the hair flows to the back. That's where you want to tie it at that end where it's flowing. And then you can see how thick this is. I'm just going to cut a little bit of a taper into it by poking in underneath. Bingo. It's like rawhide. It's real thick stuff, this uh, this rabbit strip. Well, I guess it is rawhide. And then uh, what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of a taper in. Tongue out again. Good job. And then I'm going to tie it facing forward. Just like so. 
and we're live at Spud here and we got people coming through the door. Okay, so we're tying it in. Okay, tie her in, nice and tight. And the tongue is just a way. What we're gonna do is just kind of taper it down a little bit with a thread. And at this point, what we're gonna do, now that we got this, you can see the taper is nice and smooth here. We're gonna go up to the eye of the hook here. You can see that with the salmon singles, there's a, a step where the overlap. What I've been doing is putting it the dumbbell pretty well right where those two come together so I'm gonna walk this up and then all you're gonna do is figure eight up and over oh the dumbbell is so big it's tough to get it in there perfectly sometimes just like that and then all you're gonna do is just figure eight a couple times around it back and forth yeah, we're, we're live here at Spud Valley Sporting Goods there's people shopping in the back and the big thing is, is once you get these guys on there, you see that I'm putting it on the top of the shank. This is going to create this hook to want to ride this way in the water, which is a big one. You don't want it riding the other way or this guy's going to be hanging in the bottom on everything. So once we got that, we just go around it a few times, making sure that we lock that dumbbell on there really well. The last thing you want is that guy coming undone. When you're clanking bottom then we're going to take our solar res bone dry god that looks good that's amazing how good those things look when they're on there solar res bone dry we're going to give her a couple dabs on top give it two seconds to set in then we're going to get busy with our solar res uv light and you're probably going to see some smoke come off that stuff and that's curing it instantaneously and then I'm going to go around to the bottom here and I'll put a little dab, a little dab on the bottom just to make sure that everything is locked into place. How are we doing? Is there got a bunch of people? There's nobody on the uh, controls right now. So if you're leaving comments, I uh, probably won't get back to you until we're done tying this. Uh, John Horner's got a couple really good patterns for us after this. And uh, I'll be on the camera answering your guys' questions. So now we're gonna go back up over top, throw a quick whip finish in. We're gonna go grab our bobbin cradle, slap this guy over top, and we're gonna work our way back. Pretty simple stuff. And back we go. You're seeing how quick and easy that is. That's why I love this stuff. It is so easy to work with. So now, take that uh, thread back off the bobbin cradle. So if we got a little bit of shake in there, back up over the top, and all we're gonna do, wiggle our way through this fine fur, locking it into place. Last thing you want is that uh, rabbit strip now to come undone. And then we're going to take our scissors, nip this one at the butt, pull this guy back a bit. I want to make sure that that rabbit strip is locked into place nice and pretty like. Locked in place. So I've got this cup of water here that actually had my coffee in it earlier. I'm going to wet my fingers and all I'm doing is getting this rabbit hair, this fine rabbit hair, wet. Because for the next thing that I'm about to do, it makes it a whole lot easier. Because if you let that stuff get all dry and up in your dubbing loop, it's going to make a whole new nightmare for you. So I'm just getting these wet fingers all up in this fine rabbit. Okay. See how it's laying nice and pretty now. So I can get that water back out of the way. What I'm gonna do is create a nice big dubbing loop. It's better be on the big side than on the small side, especially when you're doing dubbing loops. 
last thing you want to do is not have enough material to fill in the head and build your head up and then be stuck improvising so now I've got uh, this is Spirit River Lightning Dub FL Shrimp so I would prefer to uh, to tie it in the uh, hairline ice dub in the FL pink but this is just what I had and this is what I'm going to use so as I'm pulling it out I'm kind of fluffing it up a little bit you're going to put a fair amount of material in there stretching it out a little bit kind of matting it together and then I'm going to open up this dubbing loop I'm going to get it try to get it straight to start it off right stuff it up in that dubbing loop that's nice and buggy stuff bud see the the more buggy stranny that you can get this the fuller and more flow you're gonna have with your head and it'll kind of tie together real nice with the body you'll see here in a second all right so I got a lot of material in there all you're gonna do give this thing a good spin nice get it tight because you don't want it undoing and then once it's all spun up like it is right here you can see hopefully good cameraman can you see that looks good okay we're gonna take our velcro strip all I'm doing is just trying to pull a little bit of the trap fibers out of this dubbing loop so that when I spin it up it's gonna uh, fill out nice and flow Steelhead and Chinook cannot resist the flow. Neither can hockey players. So, now that we got this all good, I'm going to uh, just leave that for two seconds, throw a whip finish on the head here, put the bobbin back on the cradle, and we're going to finish this head of this beautiful Chinook Steelhead fly. So now we're just using rotary features. Just going to build it up a little bit. We're going to go in behind, in front, building it, building it up as we go. Back across, in front. Look at how this is coming out, man. Is that not looking good, John? Yeah, buddy. And then we're going to put one wrap in front, just like that. Honestly, I think I nailed it for, for that dubbing loop. I've got just the right amount of material in this head for what I'm trying to achieve here. Right now it's looking pretty bugged out, fuzzy. And I'm just trapping the, the loop, the dubbing loop, and then I'm gonna cut the last of it off here. What you're gonna do at this point is try your best to pull most of this material back and then finish off your head. Nice and simple. If you got other colors of thread, like red is really nice for Chinook flies or steelhead flies. I like to tone a different color in there than what I did. I put pink on pink, but that's just what I had in my uh, bobbin. Didn't really think that through too well. And we're just going to clean a little bit of the loose stuff up. Nothing worse than a dirty head. You want to keep your heads looking nice and clean and taper them. Okay, a little whip finish. Tighten that guy down nice and tight. I'm just going to give this a slow roll here so that I can get that cut off really nice and tight. Okay, so before I start plucking away at this dubbing loop, once again, I'm going to go back to my solar res bone dry, dip into it, and you're going to see a transformation of this thread. Making it glass. Making it last. Making it look good. We're going to hit it with the UV solar res light. That's going to cure it instantaneously. I'm really looking forward to fishing these patterns, Johnny. Now. Looks like a wet rat. Now. Just wait. You're going to see the transformation here. 
Here we go. Make a magic. Make the magic happen there, big bad boy. Oh, look at that thing start to come together. Actually, you know what? That actually looks pretty good with that. Uh, I've been kind of adjusting to how the uh, how that uh, ice dub looks. But this is pretty stranny, buggy looking stuff. You can see. So now, what you got here, some nice silly legs in the back, rubber silly legs. Two-tone fly that's meaty, chunky, sexy. And one thing I'm going to tell you is if you're chucking this pattern, hang on to your rod nice and tight because no joke, Chinook and Steelhead both hit like freaking the grease lightning. And the last thing you want to do is see your rod fly out of your hand and torpedo along the water skipping following a big fish. So we're just going to give this one a little bit more touch up with the Velcro strip. As you can see, I'll give it a slow roll. Tell me what you think guys. Leave the comment in the, in the box below. Have a look at that. You're telling me that fish aren't going to eat this thing? It's got me licking my lips. Anyhow, Chinooky, time fly. So let's go up to the uh, camera four or three. Is it three? Okay, that's a pretty simple pattern that we were tying there. As you can see, just wrapping uh, rabbit strip, pretty well zonker strip on a big, sh a big shank on a size two single salmon hook by Mustad. Super simple, looks super good, man. Meaty. Look forward to some pictures with a uh, fish with that sticking in the side of its mouth. Anyhow, it's, uh, it's almost that time that we uh, start looking around for some steelhead here down in uh, Pemberton, Squamish area. And uh, I know the guys down in Vancouver or in Chilliwack are starting to get a few on the better. And the Chilliwack River, I guess it's kind of the same river. Some guys will probably tell you it's different. but uh, And then I know over on the island, the guys are starting to get a few nice fish over there too. So anyhow, thanks for watching. I know uh, Johnny Horndog Horner, he's got, a, he's got a couple real nice flies for you. I'll give you a quick taste test. Look at this. Look at that intruder. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to want to stick around for this. But uh, like I said earlier, that's the, uh, the chartreuse version of the same fly that I just tied and uh, leave us some comments let me let me hear from you let's see some uh, steelhead pictures some Chinook pictures signing out with that camera five